all set. We are live. Good evening. I'm Mark Haley from um, the chairman of the Municipal Skating Rink Building Committee, formerly the chair of the Preliminary uh, Design Committee. And I'd like to introduce tonight of what we're going to do and some of the ground rules. This is being recorded. Um, and some of the ground rules are that I'd like each of the community to speak for only two minutes if they're speaking for the first time. I'd like to limit their comments to one minute in the second because we may have a number of people trying to speak and we're trying to get this all, uh, get as much input as we can and let everybody voice their opinions. So the purpose of this meeting tonight is to discuss the program needs and the current design for this facility. It's important to understand that this facility is not just a replacement of the existing rink. This is a new community facility to support Belmont High School athletics and their student athletes, the Belmont recreation programs and the greater community, not just for the five or six months the rink has been open previously, but for a 12, for a 12 month time frame. This facility will ultimately be used for all four seasons during the year. The committee was provided input from the various stakeholders, including the Belma High School, Recreation, and, the, and some in the community, and what were their desires. The community and the design team have diligently worked to satisfy those needs within the most economical and physically responsible manner. We have developed with the help of Ted Galante, our architect, reuse of all spaces, or, or multiple uses of all spaces within the facility. So that a locker room is not just dedicated to one sport, one season. We utilize all of these spaces for each and every season so that we get multiple uses, so we can reduce the number of spaces. And that's important because the cost of a building like this is by the square foot. So the least amount of square foot that we can build, the least cost it will be. So that's how we got there, is we essentially developed a program that satisfies the stakeholders' needs, but also reuses most of the spaces for multiple uses. And that, that's important. Although we will not be discussing this tonight, the future site in the design of the areas west of Harrisville will be presented in a public forum in September, including sustainability issues, aspects of, of the new facility. So tonight I'd like to limit our discussion to the program and the program needs and how that all enters into what the design of this facility is. We've come a long way in the six months that the preliminary building committee and now the municipal skating rink facility building committee has been in existence. And this is for a project that has been really discussed for the last 20 years. And that's important to note. This is not just something that all of a sudden came up at the beginning of this year. The needs of the rink have been discussed for many years and we're now undertaking it to try to get it built before it in fact fails because failure of this rink would be a major impact to the town programs that are run by the Recreation Commission, programs that the Belmont High School uses, and also the community at large. What I'd like to do is discuss and introduce right now is the committee, which is a municipal skating rink committee. And I'm gonna do this in alphabetical order. Is first, Tom Caputo, who's acting as treasurer of the committee. Anthony Ferenti, who is the co-chair for public outreach. Frank French, who is a representative of the Belmont Youth Hockey Association. Mark Haley, who is chair, formerly coach of the uh, Belmont High School Girls Hockey Program. Daniel Helston. Um, Danelle Long. Anne-Marie Mahoney. 
Megan Moriarty, who's a member of the school committee, chairman of the school committee, is also on this meeting. Dante Mazzioli, who's co-chairman of design and construction, who was also a high school coach and worked in the rank here, at least he tells me, for 40 years. Catherine Oates, who's working up and working on the uh, sustainability aspects of the rank in developing a cost benefit analysis for that. Steven Saylor, who is the secretary of this committee and William Shea. So there's 12 members of the committee. In addition, tonight we have John Phelan, who is the superintendent of schools, who you will hear from for different things. Ted Galante, who's the architect with Galante, Ted Galante Architectural Studios. Tom Gazunas and Dan White from CHA, who's the owner's project manager, who we've hired to help us uh, in this endeavor. And I think Brandon Fitz of the Belmont Recreation Department. With that, I'm gonna turn it over to Ted Galante for the overall program. And then you'll hear from the Belmont School Department relative to their program. I will talk more about the rink program towards the front of the rink. And then the Belmont Recreation Program from Brandon will talk about how they think the use of the rink will be. Then we'll open it up to an open forum. With that, I'm gonna turn it over to Ted. Thank, Thank you, Ted. you, Mark. Good, good evening, everyone. Um, I assume we can see my screen. So I'll go through this. Thank you, Anthony. I'll go through this uh, uh, relatively quickly. Uh, there's a lot to cover, but but um, I'll go through it quickly so that we can um, have an open conversation about things. Uh, the design focus charge was to renovate and expand the skating rink, remove the white field house, make the new rink as sustainable as possible, keep the fields functional after the building is complete, consider implications of the fields and consider implications of the parking, uh, uh, things that we're going to develop. Um, we have Harris Field on the right-hand side of the screen. The existing skating rink is the beige rectangle just to the left of that, and the white field houses below that, and then to the left, are, again, are all the fields that are uh, intended to remain functional. The rink, as we all know it, has been um, in existence for some 50 years, and it has certainly met its useful life. Um, the building is... Um, unsafe, I would say. Um, it is failing in, in any number of ways. It is a, um, um, the building is not insulated. And so, and so there's a cost to keeping this building operational and, and, an, and a very wasteful cost of energy. Um, it leaks, it is rusted in significant ways. Um, there are significant code violations. Um, this is allegedly a handicapped access ramp, which is in, in, in all sorts of violation of codes. Um, so it's in very rough shape. The, the White Field House, similarly built in 1932, nearly 100 years ago, right? It's 19, it's, two, it's 2022. This building is 90 years old um, and has been in a state of failure for quite some time and uh, is also... Um, very energy inefficient, um, is, is failing in any number of ways and has all sorts of violations. So as we start to think about um, the, the, the project, we have Concord Ave running along diagonally on the site, on this site model. Um, there is the, uh, the, the rink and the, the field houses we talked about in the fields. Um, and we're starting to talk about the schematic design of the rink. Uh, a conceptual design of the field and a conceptual design of parking. And I think as, as uh, Mark said, we're gonna talk about fields and parking in a separate meeting. Today, we're primarily talking about the rink. Um, in the uh, rink, we currently have um, obviously an ice sheet, a single sheet of ice, and we're proposing a single sheet of ice. There's lockers and lobby and spectator seating and the Zamboni and many other things. In the white field house, there's um, a similar set of program elements uh, for um, many of the sports, softball, baseball, field hockey, locker rooms. Um, there's the possibility um, of some additional program, uh, first aid, which would be lovely, parking, um, tickets, ice rentals, things of that nature. As we start to think about all of those program elements, they aggregate, they aggregate together. 
they aggregate together uh, to um, start a program diagram, something like this, where the ice sheet is at the center and all of the um, elements are around the perimeter of the, of the ice sheet. Overall, the idea is to aim for net zero energy to have um, the building be an uh, all electric fossil fuel free um, um, building. Um, we have a number of energy reducing features. Currently, as I said, the building is uninsulated. One, one easy step is to insulate the building. When we, when we insulate a building, it saves energy, right? The energy code requires us to do that. Um, and so we're, you know, the, the green engineer is uh, one of our team members who will be working on the project. We're trying to renovate, reuse, recycle. Um, in terms of making the ice, we're trying to use modular uh, elements that freeze the ice as opposed to one large element that freezes the ice. We're using the waste heat from that to heat the ground below because it would prevent it from freezing, which is why the, there are so many frost heaves in the building now. Um, so we're, we're capturing waste heat, super insulate the building as we talked about, bring in natural daylight so that we can limit the use of artificial lighting, capture the embodied energy of some of the existing building, fossil fuel free, make it all electric, um, put photovoltaic panels on the roof. There's a, a group of people studying um, how many panels, what the energy requirements are and what's happening there. The potential for geothermal is there. Um, there's something called demand control ventilation via, via CO2 monitoring, uh, use of heat pumps, even if we don't use geothermal. Um, so there's a number of different elements that are you know, desiccant-based dehumidifiers, these are sort of details. And so the idea is to have a building that is a renovated um, expansion of the current failing rink, but one that is energy efficient and um, developed for the long haul for Belmont. The existing site, as we talked about, has the ice rink, has all the fields, has Harris Field, and White Field houses down here. The proposed site would have the new building in place of the expanded and renovated building in place of the existing building. Uh, we haven't studied the parking yet, but that's in process in this diagram. The building itself, the floor plan is currently roughly 30,000 square feet. Uh, the sheet of ice is in the center. The walls are around the perimeter so much as they are as walls. They're really just metal panels on, on hold together with some wire. Um, there are some uh, support spaces that are that are along the front toward Concord Ave, which is to the left of the plan. The expanded version of the rink would have um, the same, the, 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 the ice sheet at the center, as was talked about. Uh, there's an entry vestibule and a warm-up room right at the beginning. Uh, there are public restrooms for um, uh, men and women and gender neutral. There's office space, there's rentals, skates, um, uh, uh, ticketing area. Uh, there's a concession stand. So now if I'm at a football game and I'm uh, watching a football game, I can come over and buy a cup of hot chocolate or, or potentially warm up or potentially use a reasonable restroom and go back to watching the football game. So that is not part of a skating event. That's part of the larger community approach that Mark had mentioned, where concessions may be accessible for, from the front of the building for other sports. As someone who's spent a lot of time watching his children play sports, um, having a place for a coffee and a, and a break is, is a, would be a, a really welcome element. Um, as we step inside, we have dressing rooms for uh, hockey players, if that's the, the direction we're heading with that portion. We have seating around the perimeter, um, around the, the there's a, a shop for the Department of Public Works who does a lot of maintenance and work in, in areas um, around the fields. We have some bench for parents, benches for parents to lace up their kids' skates, um, which is something that takes some time, as parents will know. Uh, there are restroom, sorry, locker rooms for high school sports along the bottom. And again, we're trying to use the kind of leftover space, architects like to say interstitial space, leftover space between the Harris Field and the, and the hockey rink and, and use this sort of leftover space and, and grab that to make the most efficient use and not lose any field space west of Harris, right? One of the big goals is to not lose field space west of Harris. And so this placing the portion of the building closer to Harris Field um, was a, 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 an efficiency to reuse what uh, the, the space that's there. Um, to the rear of the building, again, the tracks are on the far right. And so the, the end of the building 
Uh, the end of the ice rink is here, and we have uh, some uh, 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 storage, mechanical, um, Zamboni room, ice making room, all off to the back toward the tracks, um, as well as dressing rooms for the Harris Field teams. So again, we're reusing areas that are not really, uh, we're using part of the, the, the property that's not very efficient and using it in a very efficient way to expand the building in that direction. Um, so as a series of program elements, um, the, the items that are in this sort of light purple color are um, uh, um, mostly skating rink related. The items that are in this kind of um, um, peach color are more public uh, um, uh, community related. The, the green or the high school area sports and then on top of the one of the efficiencies that we're building in is on top of the dressing rooms and restrooms, you see a stair going up on this side of the building. There is a um, community room up on top. And so that community room is also part of the community asset of the of the project. Um, and I can go up to this floor 12 feet up and I can watch um, the skaters um, here, figure skating, uh, uh, evening games, children games, whatever it may be. And it's an enclosed area. So it's a warming room that's part of um, viewing the, the skating, but also viewing to the outside to the sports fields um, if, if need be. Currently, the mechanical system for the building is in the front of the building. We're putting the mechanical system in the rear of the building by the tracks. We're, we're going to do acoustic studies to determine what this, uh, uh, it, it's also, the, the tracks are raised up higher. And so there's a, a sound barrier there, but we're going to do some acoustic studies to uh, sort out some of those elements, which are required anyway. If we cut the building in half, called a section, see the ground level is here the bleachers looking at harris field field off to the right is in that direction the dpw shop we're trying to tuck it under the bleachers a little bit to make it very efficient use of that um, sort of dead space that's there now um, the uh, this is sort of the, the the entry vestibule warming area looking out toward the skating uh, and these are some of the uh, dressing rooms uh, this is the mezzanine level looking out toward the skating as well as looking out toward the fields and the idea is to bring in as much natural light as possible and so we have something labeled a skylight we're, we're working on cost effective ways of doing that but we're we're trying to bring natural light into the building to limit its reliance on artificial lighting as much as possible so if we talk about a program matrix which is really the elements that i showed earlier were about defining um the building size but None of these things are used in isolation. The calendar had to be overlaid on top of this. And a lot of people in, in the rec department and um, the committee and others did a lot of really great work to start to sort which sports are active at which times of the year and, and what parts of the building are being used as a result of that. And fundamentally, the entire building is being used all the time. And so, so this is an illustration of the fall sports and so september october november um uh, is the is the, the list here and so um we have field hockey and we have soccer and we have football and those are using the these locker rooms the blue spaces are the the current what i what i labeled as hockey dressing rooms but they're also being used for field hockey and or soccer for dressing for that uh, football can be using these um, uh, locker rooms during that same period of time. Um, hockey skills and drills can be used uh, for these locker rooms at the same period of time. Um, the ice is always used. Uh, the mechanical systems and such are obviously always used. Um, the um, 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 community spaces are, are either used as part of some of the games or can be used as private rentals and events um, for birthday parties and other things. And so that's just three months out of the year. If we look at winter sports, December, January, February, um, the ski team is active. Hockey is obviously active. Um, youth hockey uh, is skating. Again, um, the, the yellow area is for the for the the community, but used during some of the um, games and such that are happening uh, at various times, um, and that's in the winter months. If we look at the spring, again, sports come back 
in a, in a lot of ways. Uh, lacrosse can be using these rooms, ice hockey, lacrosse, track and field, rugby, JV baseball, all may be using these locker rooms, uh, as well as youth hockey will be using the dressing rooms. Um, the common area is again, part of the community used for to watch the games, um, to get concessions, to use the restrooms, uh, all of those things, but also for private events. And, and I keep pausing at that because there, there's still more that's happening down on the right-hand side of the slide. But I think that the picture is clear that the, the, the place is used um, and, and programmed to be used uh, all months of the year. And so in the summer, uh, again, lacrosse, track and field, rugby. And so all of the, the uh, 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 proposed dressing or locker rooms, we're calling them dressing rooms or locker rooms because some have lockers and some are just for, for suiting up and dressing. Um, those are all active. Um, and um, the summer programs, Belmont rec programs, et cetera, um, have access to, it wouldn't be the sheet of ice. It's the shape for the drawing, but it would be this floor area is the, is the, um, possibility. And so, um, that becomes the, the, the program element, um, for, um, for that, for the building at throughout the 12 months out of the year. And so, um, I'll pause there and and uh, Mark hand it back to you. Yes. Yeah, so so Matt, could you uh, have Frank French, Patrice, and John Phelan come in as panelists? Sure thing. Give me one second. Thank and if you. I should unshare, uh, let me know. Ted, that was a that was a great overview of what what is occurring. And what I'd like to do now is turn it over to the school department, either Meg or John, to talk about how they develop their needs for their programs. And I think one of the things that I think may be overlooked and maybe some of the community do not know is currently the White Field House provides a locker room space. There's four locker rooms within the White Field House. That provides a locker room space for the Belmont High School athletic teams at by different seasons. And those are being replaced by the ones that uh, Ted talked about down in the lower right-hand corner of the new rink, which is the four dedicated locker rooms for Belmont student athletes. So John, do you, are you on now, John? Sure, yes I am and thank you. Thank and you, um, thank you very much for having me. I also would like to let the group know that Adam Pritchard, our athletic director is on. If you would like to make him a panelist, just in case there's questions about the athletic program that he could, uh, inform us on. So if you could let him on as a panelist, that would be great. Um, my name is John Phelan. I'm the superintendent of schools. I'm very thankful to be here tonight to speak to uh, this project, um, specifically for program. Uh, obviously, the, the high school uh, boys and girls hockey team depend greatly on the rink, and we know we uh, need a new rink uh, as well as for our youth hockey and recreation programs. And to specifically tonight related to program, why we're uh, organizing the locker space in a certain way, uh, as uh, was pointed out earlier by Mark, that we do have uh, eventually the loss of the White Field House. I apologize. I have a big dog in the background with my apologies. Um, and we, we need to utilize, um, it, would be, it would be great a great asset for the community to utilize this new space to replace those uh, locker rooms and put them in the new rink. Um, and when folks start to ask, why would you need so many and what, what do you need them for? I want to thank um, uh, TGAS for, for outlining uh, the fall, the winter, and the, and the spring use of those spaces for all of our varsity teams that would be on that side of the building um, on playing fields or in the rink um, in both rugby, lacrosse, soccer, field hockey. Um, the MSBA program that we built the new high school uh, through uh, only allows us to have a certain amount of square footage for locker space within the field house area. Um, the locker rooms inside there only allow for one varsity room for girls athletics and one varsity locker room for boys athletics. And as pointed out in the, in the presentation, you can see that there's a lot more activity in teams that would need space, uh, not only for the winter time when the rink is in full bloom as a rink, but also throughout the course of the year 
uh, not only by the school department, but also utilized by the town, our youth sports and recreation. So we we uh, have a very vast amount of uh, sports for our boys and girls at the high school. Uh, we know we have a robust youth program and, and, a, and, a, and a robust recreation program. And we believe that these spaces would go a long way in supporting a community building uh, that could be used year round uh, for the existing sports for the high school. Uh, and as we bring it up for our middle school sports as well, um, as we move forward uh, in Belmont. So um, we're thankful to be here and we uh, would like to see this program move forward and we support um, the presentation as it was presented tonight. So, so John, this is Marcus. Would you also talk a little bit about the locker rooms for the Harris Field and the uses of those? And, and the, it will need because there isn't anywhere for when visiting teams come to play a sport at Harris Field, there's really nowhere for them to go. Yeah. So, you know, when, when we have football teams or field hockey teams or soccer teams, uh, in especially in the fall when it's inclement weather, the, there is nowhere for folks to change. Uh, they have to come in their uniforms and leave in their uniforms. When you have halftime and you're having coaches get their athletes together to um, take that break at halftime, uh, there is no warm space for them to go and utilize. And, um, you know, where the high school is currently placed with the field house uh, that we're keeping and renovating as part of the project, uh, it's quite a distance for folks to have to travel all the way back and utilize the school if that was one of the options. Uh, it's certainly not ideal. Um, so with all the sports named in spring, in winter, uh, and in fall, uh, it would do a great service to our not only our own teams and student athletes, but also to the visiting teams uh, to have a space to change, uh, to have a space to be able to go and get warm at halftime and come back out. Um, and also to the folks in our families who are in the stands to be able to utilize the space as well. So uh, they will be fully utilized all three seasons. Um, and we think it's a, definitely going to be an asset to the to the campus that the community is supporting uh, through the building project. Thank, thank you, John. So, so I'd like to talk a little bit about what Ted described at the front of the rink. Currently today, when people come to Harris Field or go to come to the rink, we have a Johnny on the spot outside of the rink for people to use. This rink has been designed to provide restrooms for men and women plus gender neutral and an also a community or a warm up space within the lobby. We, we've designed it such a way that we can close that off. So if the rink is in fact not open, it's only the front portion of this area would be open to the public. So they can come and go, use the restrooms, use the concession stand and come back out again. We're still working on the dressing rooms, but I think those dressing rooms can be multi-purposed dressing rooms for some of Belmont athletes, John, to be able to use at different times of the year uh, for the fall sports where you don't have locker rooms for soccer or field hockey and the like, those dressing rooms could be used for those. You wouldn't be able to store your equipment there, but you would be able to use them for dressing. And I think that's important to add that aspect to this design that we're currently working on. And Frank French, I'd like you to just talk a little bit about BYHA and the egg uses of this facility. Yes, thank you, Mark. Um, yes, Belmont Youth Hockey um, would be very much, you know, interested in, in, in being able to utilize those four um, locker rooms that you mentioned that are out kind of by the front of the building. Um, you know, our, our right now, our program, you know, has to rent ice elsewhere. Um, also, there's not, you know, really adequate locker room space in the facility as it sits. So this will be an integral part of Belmont Youth Hockey, um, you know, future is having adequate locker room space to, to dress in and get ready and, you know, not, not have us have to look elsewhere for ice time, et cetera. So I think it's going to be a vital part Part of the program to um, have this locker room space for the youth hockey programs to utilize while, you know, the high school uh, sports teams might be using the dedicated locker rooms for the high school programs. And then Belmont Youth Hockey can use um, the ones that are dedicated for Belmont Youth Hockey and other sports and also, you know, uh, other programs and sport and, you know, uh, men's leagues and women's leagues, et cetera. And, and I think, Frank, too, is the reason there are four locker rooms is if, the youth hockey program or even the high school program, whatever, has back-to-back -back games, 
you need four locker rooms. At a rink, four locker rooms is really the minimum. Many of the rinks I go to today have six locker rooms because they got to keep people coming and going and having, as the people coming and leaving, they have to get more people in. So you have to have a minimum of four. We decided to go with four. And Mark, if I can just add to, you know, Belmont Youth Hockey serves, you know, 500 um, uh, youth in, in Belmont and as well as neighboring communities. You know, the program is thriving. Um, you know, our, our girls program is one of the fastest growing programs in the state. So we're just having more and more members um, that are joining the program and, and it's really exciting. So having this locker room space will just, will just enable us to better serve our community and the neighbor, neighboring communities and, and you know, existing Belmont Youth Hockey members and, and Belmont Youth Hockey members in the future. Thank you. That's great. Is um, Anthony, is, is Brandon on? Would he like to speak to the recreation? What he envisions for the recreation program? Yes, thank you. And uh, I apologize in advance if we get interrupted. I've got my, my two-year-old here with me tonight. So you might hear some uh, some little noises, but uh, thus is Zoom. Um, so yes, thank you. So again, my name is Brandon. I'm the director of the recreation department. And um, echoing what everyone else said tonight, having a, um, a new rink, a usable rink with all the amenities added is going to be a great asset um, to the recreation department and to the larger community. Currently, um, so the recreation department oversees and operates the rink um, as it stands now. The rink is operated five months out of the year from November to March. So adding in um, a few more months, making it a nine month operation or longer, depending on how it goes, would certainly allow for increased rink programming as well as some off season uses. Um, I actually just got done creating the, the schedule for this winter. Um, and just to quickly name a few of our user groups, um, you know, we have the, you know, Belmont Youth Hockey Association, Belmont High School. Uh, we're home to Valley Hockey programs, the Yankee Hockey League. Um, we have three different recreational women's hockey programs for adults, men's hockey, co-ed hockey, adaptive skating. We do a ton of skating lessons with Bay State Skating School. We have a lot of public skate hours, stick and puck hours, and then we rent out to many of the schools, um, elementary schools in Chenery for their different PTO skate nights and school building events. Um, I, I know it was mentioned before, but one of the biggest questions we get asked at the rec department is uh, if we offer skate rentals. So having that a, a skate shop potentially would be a great asset to the rink, I think that's a big barrier for people um, accessing the rink as it is right now. So having possible skate rentals would be great value added and could increase revenue at the rink. And then um, I know um, folks mentioned figure skating. Um, right now we have some different figure skaters come during public skating times, but certainly I think having a more functional rink would allow the figure skating community and, and be more and make it more appealing for them to come to the rink. Um, again, so that was sort of the in-season ice time uses that we have programmed um, up for this upcoming winter and in, in the past. Some alternative uses, um, again, as was mentioned before, there are numerous 5K road races in Belmont, so staging for different sporting events, special events, having those restrooms and concessions available will be huge. Um, at the rec department, we've done snowshoeing before on some of the fields around the rink, so being able to offer more of those programs, the multi-use rooms offering enrichment classes, as well as doing possible fundraisers for different groups in town. Finally, um, presuming there might be some off-season use and downtime when the ice um, is melted and might allow for a large empty um, our arena. Um, our summer camp is um, growing year by year. So in the summer months, um, it could potentially, again, these are all just potential brainstorms, could potentially be a home to our summer camp programs, which is um, uh, serves about 120 um, plus kids every summer, um, uh, per week every summer. Well, it would allow us to potentially do maybe large concerts, thinking of some alternative uses, Pickleball, tennis, roller derby, skateboarding is growing, indoor lacrosse, indoor soccer in the summer, special events, fundraisers, and again, staging for events. So, um, yeah, I know that was really quick, but um, I know there's a lot to cover tonight. The recreation program is very robust. And, um, you know, as someone who operates the rink um, in season, it's, uh, it's going to be a great asset to have a new rink. So thanks for all the hard work. Thank you, Brandon. Is, uh, I'll now open this up to um, the public for comment and Ted Kazunas or Matt is going to help 
with uh, raising of hands and I think I see Ann Paulson's the first. Remember we're at a two minute and I'm gonna set the timer. Thank you, Ann. Matt, do you have to unmute her or make her a panelist? I've made her a panelist. She just has to unmute now. Gotcha. I think I'm unmuted. Thank you, Ann. Yeah. Go ahead. Are you asking me to speak? I, your hand was up. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't put my hand up. I don't know how that happened. I apologize. I'm listening. No. I'm really no. interested in the parking and the uh, drop off. I that think the be. program sounds good, although I will have to say that when John Phelan said how important it was to have uh, for all the teams to have a place to go and to allow the visiting team to change their clothes and so forth, hurts a little bit when there's a porta potty over at uh, Winbrook. So except for that, everything looks good. Thank, thank you, Ann. Um, who's next, Tom? Because uh, not... From the committee, Dante Mozioli has his hand up and then we have two questions in the chat that I'll read after. Okay. Let's go to Dante first. Uh, good evening, everybody that's in attendance. Uh, I just wanted to to speak on that this is a uh, Belmont Municipal Skating Rink. And this the programs that we put forth here, um, it not only serves, we've heard a lot about hockey and, and skating, but it really serves the public. Uh, when someone comes down to that, to the track and field currently to run or walk or just exercise and get, get fresh air, uh, there's no place to use facilities other than a porta party that is is kind of unsightly and it's not really appropriate as far as I'm concerned. So keep in mind, this this is a community rink, mm -hmm. a community uh, facility to serve us all. And I think that's what the intent of this committee, not only did we want to uh, create a, a fine ice skating facility for figure skaters, all different programs, but we also uh, expanded it to, uh, to accommodate in all areas of the community. That's all. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Mr. Mazzioli. Is um, Tom, you want to do the two chat questions? Sure. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, from Andrew, can you speak to the amount slash location of seating? Uh, Ted? Yes. Yeah. Um, the uh, amount and location of seating um, the, the, the amount is around 200 seats. The location is still being coordinated, uh, but the intent is to have it both along the um, top of the plan, as you see here, looking out over the ice, as well as up on the mezzanine above this area here. Okay. From Larry Link. Does the municipal sports team use of locker rooms accommodate all high school needs as per AD question? Essentially between what limited space was created in the new high school and loss of white field house, this model fits all high school needs? Question mark. Next question also from Larry. While I compliment the design and versatility, isn't the projected MSRBC budget basically now picking up the high school team costs in incremental visitor team spaces question now cut out from the original high school middle school BC budget. Okay, I'll, Ted, I'll, I'll, I'll let you take the first piece and I'll take the second. Actually, I think the first portion of the question um, seemed more that it was um, for the either the AD or someone who can speak to the quantity of uh, uh, lockers that are sure. not included in the school. Um, so, so we'll turn that over to John then, Ted. Sure. And um, so we thank you, Larry, for the question. Uh, with these extra spaces, we believe with the two locker rooms that are afforded to us through the the um, 
Massachusetts School Building Authority. Uh, in these spaces, we believe that our indoor and outdoor teams will have access to locker room space that's sufficient for our programming. Keeping in mind that these sports don't just have one team, but soccer has uh, varsity, uh, sub varsity sports as uh, teams as well. So uh, they will be able to rotate and use those uh, rooms effectively. Um, it is uh, two rooms more uh, support than the white field house. So we do have uh, some extra capacity, uh, but between the uh, existing footprint of our field house moving forward with the two varsity locker rooms in these uh, programs should be supported. Um, and just to answer the second question, the, the building committee of the high school always had to uh, stay in the regulations of the Massachusetts School Building Authority and, and could only by policy have the amount of locker room spaces that they have right now. So there was no other plan to support locker rooms outside of the space um, other than to talk about if the rink could do so if a rink was rebuilt. Um, I know Tom Kasunas wears two hats in this uh, discussion and may be able to speak with more clarity to that, but there was there was no extra cost involved from the building committee. Uh, these are uh, added supports that the district could very, very much use. And, and, and John, if I can just expand on that, you're correct. Is the high school building committee was carrying the cost to remove the white field house, but they never carried any design or cost mm -hmm. to rebuild the locker rooms that existed in that facility or, or expand them to include locker rooms for Harris Field. So that's right. that was always going to be to go with the rink if a new rink was to be built. And that's important to, for the community to understand. Next, that Tom. That, that is correct. Thank you, Tom. Uh, that's it that we, for questions. We have Roger Rubel with his hand up. Go ahead, Roger. Okay, can, you should be able to hear me now. Yes? Roger. Yep, yes. okay. So um, um, I am interested. Uh, do you want to take questions on some of the uh, net zero sustainability um, no, issues? That, that, that'll be in September, Roger. Okay, there'll be an actual entire meeting devoted to that? No, we're gonna discuss site and sustainability in September. And if we have to okay. roll that some more into that into October, we'll do that too. Okay, we'll if I can just, I, I just like, then I, I'll get rid of all of my comments except one. And that is that you consider sloping the south side of the building to the south. The roof of the, I'm sorry, the building roof, the south side of the building, have the roof face south. That can and be considered. The, that that can be considered, yes. Yeah, okay. and the second one is a solar canopy out, outside the vestibule. Also, also worth considering, Roger, thank you. Great, thank you. Thank you, Roger. Mm -hmm. uh, next. next is Rick Kushiel. I hope I pronounced that right, I apologize. Rick, you should be unmuted. Did he unmute and become a panelist, Tom? He's unmuted, so he should be able to speak. That's how Roger Roger spoke as unmuted. Right. Okay. Why don't Why don't we come back to him, Tom? Okay. Uh, Eric Hackinson. Uh, hello, uh, good evening, uh, Eric Atkinson from Statler Road. Um, a comment and two questions. First comment, uh, prior to tonight's session, I was not aware that this was truly a multi-use facility. So a thought for the committee uh, that an adjustment to your PR campaign may be in order for the segment of the community who may be focused on this as only a skating rink. My question for this evening, 
Um, is tonight the right conversation uh, for financing? I'm interested in the uh, incremental net cost per student over a K through 12 time period. The second is a clarification request regarding uh, comments about pickleball and skateboarding. Is it possible to um, cover over the skating rink for use as a non-skating facility? I didn't quite understand that. Thank you. Okay, I'll, I'll take the first one, the, the physical uh, or the cost of the rink, and I don't understand quite what you mean by K through 12 incremental cost, but it, it's really a cost to the town. But no, that's not on the agenda for tonight. It will be in for an agenda for another night, but could you just expand what you mean by incremental cost to K through 12? Uh, just focused on uh, certainly the um, superintendent of schools or somebody on the board um, understands how much we pay per student per year uh, extended over the lifetime of a student in the Belmont Public Schools. And I would expect that this will increase that expenditure. I'm no, interested in this. This, this would be this would be a facility that is uh, run not through the school, probably potentially not through the school department would be run through the town. So it's more for a town wide incremental cost than a student incremental cost. Does that make sense, Perfect. Eric? Perfect. Then, then I think that is the delta that um, I would be interested in understanding. Okay. And your second question was? Um, the, the second question is, there was a comment, uh, I believe, from uh, a program director about uh, pickleball and skateboarding and seemingly uh, non-skating related sports in the facility. Sure. Did I understand correctly that yeah. there's a perhaps the ability to use the rink as a non-skating facility? That that is correct, Eric. Is the rink will have a concrete floor as opposed to today. The rink is a sand floor, so you really can't use the rink surface for anything else because of the, the way that it's currently constructed. But this will have a concrete floor. The piping for the rink will be within that concrete slab. So you would be able to use anything inside the boards and the glass for other sports during other times. Formerly, the rink used to be, this facility used to be used for tennis, and then the recreation department decided not to take down the boards any longer, but they used to then hold street hockey and roller hockey within the rink itself because it had a concrete floor. That was replaced probably 15 or 18 years ago with a sand floor on top of the concrete floor, which eliminated the multi-seasonal use. Does that make sense, Eric? Sure does. Thank you for your time this evening. Anytime. Thank you. Next, Tom. Jack Weiss. Good evening, Jack. Hello, Mark. Jack Weiss. Um, uh, general comment, I uh, just want to echo what other people have said. I think that this is great uh, in the way that you've thought about multiple users and a design that uh, meets multiple purposes and multiple needs. So I applaud the group for doing that. Um, I, too, was a little bit concerned, uh, uh, confused, not concerned, confused by the summer program where it showed the ice being, uh, the, the rink being used for both, at least as I saw it, not on ice skating purposes and ice purposes. I'm not sure whether that is uh, uh, intended that you think during those summer months, you'll be able to toggle back and forth between ice uh, uh, uses and non-ice uses, but I was a little bit confused by that one slide. Uh, if I can take that one. Sure. Right so Jack, we don't know as this building committee we will not be the operators of the rink, We're, but we are designing the rink to gotcha. be utilized 12 months a year. Yep. In the future, the select board and school committee or other boards will decide how, how often the rink or the ice comes up and how long do they have the ice down. And gotcha. what I think they were showing is that if the ice is not used during June, July, and August, then you have other uses for it. Great. I, the, I, the, that I appreciate enough, that. If there's enough rental um demand then i think you keep the ice sheet in okay. uh, but, appreciate but, that clarification yeah, you, uh, you know as well as i do jack it needs to be economically neutral correct yep so i i don't know if there's a way to to show this as an either or slide right because you can't do ice hockey and figure skating as well as um you know some of these other uh, tennis and pickleball 
That is correct. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. okay. Um, appreciate that. And then the only other uh, passing comment, I know we're not talking about the fields, but back to the discussion about um, uh, the, the building, the K, uh, the 7 through 12 building program. I do think the fields to the west of Harris Field are part of the building uh, project budget. So I don't know how that impacts, um, you know, the, the discussion there about how those are being financed or whatever. But I do think that those fields were part of the original building budget. Um, so I think it is, I, I think it's not fair to say that all of this is, uh, is something that was contemplated outside of the school building project. I, I think you're correct, Jack, but the, we, are, we are doing a concept design for the fields, but the, we are not budgeting costs to construct those fields under this current program for the new municipal skating rink. Fair enough. That'll be done, that'll be done in the future. Yep. We are, however, going to carry some costs for either existing parking or enhanced parking. That will be in the budget for this municipal rink. Okay. And drop off. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Jack. John Fairland had a comment. Go ahead, John. I only wanted to, to say to Jack that the question that we answered earlier was related directly to lockers and not related to the, the site in general. So you, you are correct, but uh, we, we were no, the building committee was not responsible for lockers, but we were uh, part of the program was West of Harrisville. That part is correct. Fair enough. Thank you. Tom, who's next? I don't see any other hands raised. You're Tell telling me questions in the chat. In less than an hour. Uh, uh, panelist, let's see. What do we got? I guess I see oh, three. Rick Kushel is now in as a panelist. Okay. He has his hand raised. Great. Good evening, Rick. Is he muted, Tom? No, he is not. Rick? I see him on the screen, but I don't hear him. Yeah. Let's try someone else, Tom. We'll have to come back to Rick. Maybe you can send this question in chat. Rick, could you send your question in chat? Don't have any other questions, Mark. No other questions? No other hands. So I'd just like to open it back up to the committee. Any final comments from any of the committee members? or any of the panelists. Hearing none, seeing none, uh, I, Mr. Mazzioli, would you make a motion to adjourn? I will, I will make the motion to adjourn. Thank you, Mr. Mazzioli. Anthony, would you second? Take or anyone else in the committee? I'll second. Uh, Frank friend, second. Thank you, Dan. Uh, Mark, before you adjourn the meeting, I would just recommend that Rick be allowed to send his questions in even via email, and then we can answer them at the start of the next meeting. That, that, that's fine. And I'm, I'll apologize to Rick. Unfortunately, he doesn't seem to be able to get in to ask the question. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you, Tom, for assisting in this uh, endeavor. You're welcome. Thank you all. Very nice night. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone. Nice Bye, work. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.